Well, welcome to another episode of the Mars Driven. This time I'm doing a bit of measuring, but not the normal kind. We've got this Suzuki here today, the little Jimny. I want to see if such a small car really can fit to being a proper off-roader. We've got a little bit of Swedish terrain around us and some city to cover. I think this is the perfect vehicle for the city, especially snow, ice. It's already shown me just how impressive it can be. Let's go for a ride and check it out. So the amazing thing about this little car is that despite its tiny stature, right now it's got three guys in it, all well over six foot, relatively comfortable. You've got my uncle Kari in the passenger seat here, and my cousin Malachi just behind him. Right. Now we're going to do a little bit of off-roading now, let's see how we get on. What's the uh, Finnish word for off-roading, uncle? Mm, off-roading? Yeah. <laughs> off-roading. Oh, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> Malachi, the Swedish word? Off-roading? Off uh, I think it's off-roading. <laughs> yeah. It actually is. So right ahead we've got rutted roads, stones, we've got wet leaves and a little bit of damp and ice. And I may as well be in a Land Rover Defender. I mean, it's just nothing causing any issue at all. What are the tyres? Are they off-road tyres on this? These are the, the winter. This is the winter, winter tires. tires. Yeah, with the, with the winter grip. And it's just going a little bit, little bit, but it's not even uncomfortable, which is incredible when you think about the price point that Suzuki built these for. The only problem is, if you are out there and you're looking at this, is that this is the non-commercial version. That's why my cousin is sat in the back of it. Hold on, big hill. Can it do it? I mean, that's impressive. This is the non-commercial version, which means it's got back seats and it's got some nicer luxuries inside. And what's quite incredible is that Suzuki decided to make this, have a huge waiting list for it. In fact, Uncle, I think you had to wait two years? Yeah, we had to wait. Uh, this was years. In Sweden, it was one year. One year wait. wait. Waiting time for this, yeah. And then they stopped deciding to make it and you can only buy it as a commercial now. And that's the same in the UK. I think Sweden is the same. Yeah. Europe is the same. So Suzuki had a great little car that can perform off-road and on-road and decided to stop selling it. Come on, Suzuki, what's going on? Yeah, it's, it was an emission question. There were a lot of emissions. Emissions. That's, that's really what's made it so they registered it as a truck. In Sweden, so the emission requirements are different. So, so is this now a the commercial version is considered a truck for yeah. for business? Yeah, because it's two seater and and, uh, and, and and it has a big dog guard. Yeah. Okay. Now you can't see this on the video, but I'm driving along right on the wrong side of the road as it is here, on a heavily gritted bit of road where as we go up, I've got ice and snow on either side, and again. Despite this being a small car that shouldn't really compete with the biggest off-roaders there are, I'm, I'm not having any challenges at all. In fact, I'm barely getting any slip. I'd be interested to see what it's like with no one in the car, but I don't really think it'd be much different. It's a quite light uh, car, so if you're, if, if you're, if there's four people in the car, it's even, the grip is, is much it's really better, good. Yeah. Do you know how much it weighs? In no, kilograms? I, don't, I don't remember now. It's, uh, it's like maybe 1200 kilograms or something. So it's very light. lighter than some, well, lots of hatchbacks. Yeah. And you can and feel it in the steering, in the way it drives, in the way it accelerates. Yeah. Everything's light, everything's easy. Yeah, very easy. And, and um, the car is very easy to control on the ice. If you have two, there's a two wheel option or a four wheel. And the four wheel is, is uh, they're locked. The differentials are locked when you have a four wheel on. Okay. Yeah. So so it's uh, you need to have a very slippery surface to have the four wheel on. But you don't actually need it, the four wheel if it's not very slippery because it's very easy to control this car. What what is it in at the minute? It's is a it, two wheel. Drive. It's in two wheel right yeah. now. Yeah. So all that off roading we've just done 
That's been just using two wheel drive. Yeah, you know, normally I'll use a four wheel drive wheel. Incredible. And this is very slippery. But it's an easy and honest car to drive. What I'm really impressed with is the headroom. Because despite it being such a small car, you sit. In fact, you sit like you do in a Land Rover. Yeah. So you sit upright. Yeah. And usually in this sort of car, that would mean that my head would be jammed into the roof and mm. probably my uncles yeah, and probably absolutely. my cousins. But all of us have like a couple of inches of headroom, which this is Suzuki. This is a Japanese manufacturer. They, they generally are the ones that make the small cars that people don't fit in. So it just shows how much thinking and what a great job Suzuki did when they made this thing. Yeah, that's why it got so popular as well. Because it has all the, it's a very charming car. I, I like this one. And uh, we actually we had a Mercedes GLS before this one. <laughs> yeah, and that's what this got traded for. Yeah, exactly. And we have another, we have another car as well, of course. But it, it is perfect in the city and, and and for the kind of driving we do. And it's much more. It's, it's an easy car to, to have in the city in, in Stockholm uh, compared to a GLS. I mean, I find parking space everywhere with this one. GLS is, was almost uh, very difficult to find a parking actually. Yeah, I guess this probably has a similar parking footprint to like a Mini. Yeah, so no, uh, even less I think. It yeah, is. probably. The wheelbase is so short. Yeah, I think it's uh, th it's three, uh, three uh, eight, I don't know the length of the car, but it's, yeah. it's very short. What I'm still so impressed with is that despite it does all the stuff off-road, it still seems to be so good on road it feels like an all-wheel drive 4x4 it does feel like that but it does it still has manners you know and the vibrations and stuff that come in they just make it a bit charming it's not like it's a horrible rough ride when it's on road and it's been made solely for off-road use mm, no it's a very charming car and uh, surprisingly comfortable really comfortable yeah yeah it's not it's, uh, I've been driving for long, long uh, drives uh, with this as well, like yeah. 200 kilometers and things like that. And it's, uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit noisy when you get up to more than 100 kilometers an hour. Yeah. The, okay. the cruising speed, I get, it's like 90, like quite maybe 100 there somewhere. So 60 miles an hour, it still feels, still yeah. feels fine. It's only above 60 where it starts to yeah, actually feel... Because the engine has to rev so much yeah. about that, so it's a bit... Which makes sense. I mean, it, yeah. it can't be perfect, I suppose, but... No, it's, it's absolutely fine. It is, if it's going to be a city car, it seems to do exactly what people would want. And even in the poorest of conditions... Mm. But on small roads, it's perfect. But you don't need to have high speeds or whatever. Another thing is that the windscreen is quite straight, like this. Yeah. So you, you feel the contact with the surroundings. In, the, in most modern cars, it's slanting the windscreen so much, the front one. So you, you feel kind of detached from, from, from nature. With this one, on small roads, with the front window, like, like quite so straight. So vertical. So, so vertical. It's, it's very, you feel in contact with your yeah. surroundings. You're so right. This, it, that's a part of the charm of this. It's probably about a 70 degree, 75 degree mm -hmm. angle. Yeah, I can't yeah. think actually of another car today that has such a straight windscreen. No. Let us, let us know in the comments below if you can think of one, but I'm, I'm really struggling. Even modern Land Rovers have more rake on the windscreen for yeah. aero efficiency yeah. and miles per gallon. The light hits the cabin in a different way with this. It it's, does. It's, uh, it's, it's um, yeah. And it's really well connected because you can see each corner so easily to park. I mean, if you did need to city park in this thing and if you're only used to parking a tiny little city car, you'll have no problem here. You can see the corners. It's so easy and it's narrow. So if you do need to get it into a tight car par uh, parking space, there's no problem.
haven't got Sam and me in this one. But with a little bit of magic, I reckon I might be able to make um, someone maybe better than Sam up here. Let's find out. Oh, well, you're much better than the Sam. Look at that. She's a bit slobbery, so... Well, actually, she's less slobbery than Sam, so that's an upgrade. But I don't think you're going to be the best person to do a car review, Duchess. What do you think? No. Okay, let me give it another go. You're not Sam. No, but I'm much better. What do you think, cuz? Have you driven this thing off-road? I actually haven't driven this off-road. I don't even have a driving license. So, off-road would be the ultimate place to drive yeah, it then, exactly, wouldn't it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, I haven't driven it, but just riding in it, it's really smooth ride. I've, I've actually been in the, um, the Mini Hummer, but it was very, very, very uncomfortable compared to this. Like As I in, like, the ride was really bumpy. It was really bumpy, the seats were uncomfortable, whereas this in the back, you can jump in, two of my friends, you can adjust the seats and the, the neck rest. Oh, yeah, so okay. So that it, it, it's just, it's a comfortable ride. I don't think I have to get into the, uh, the gymney, you know what I mean? It's a nice, yeah, it's a okay. nice, it's a nice ride. And therefore one of my favourite cars, because you can fit a lot in it. Whereas, I don't know exactly, what, there's like a Volkswagen Lupo. Yep. Yeah, it's the little, little, little tiny city car. My friend had that, yeah. and it was like the most uncomfortable mini car I've ever been in. Really? Yeah. I suppose this does have longer travel suspension, so it means when it's going over all the bumps, it's easier for it to ride it without. Okay. Whereas like a Lupo, I mean, I, I genuinely You can't fit anything in the Lupo. The thing, I can't you've fit got, in the Lupo. You, yeah, exactly, and you've got four seats, but this you can, you put down two of the seats, right? Yes. So you've got a lot of space in the back, actually. You can do a lot with this car, that's why it's so great. Do you think if you were going to buy a car for Sweden... Yes. I don't even know my question. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, but if you were going to buy a small car to go around Stockholm in, do you think you'd look at one of these? I know, I know if you're watching, these are a little bit expensive on the used market because Suzuki for emissions, everything else, whatever, they, they couldn't keep selling them as they are. But do you think you'd get you'd get one? Absolutely. This is absolutely my favourite car. I mean, as someone who was really into cars when they were younger, kind of fell out of it, and they're getting back and is getting back into it. This is, if I could choose any first car, this would absolutely hands down be my first car. Interesting. Yeah. Just because it's like small, small, compact. I know exactly how everything works. You see what you get. It's intuitive. I don't know, it just works. I like the fact you, you wouldn't really feel like you're missing out on anything specification wise. I know this is like a top spec, so you've got uh, navigation and you've got the ability mm. to call people and mm. all that sort of, and, and fit a smartphone to it, and it's got an automatic gearbox. But even like in the base models, as long as you could connect your phone. Yeah, although that is probably the only con I have with this car, Go on. is the, what is this called, like the nav? Infotainment? Yeah. It's a, It's not, it does the job, absolutely. It, uh, I, I don't expect more okay. from a car like this, Yeah. but it's still, I definitely feel like it could be a bit smoother. As in the interface, as you're going yes. through things. But an interesting things. thing is, if you see, um, the, the, uh, the viewer won't be able to see this, but right above the time there, yeah. you've actually got the SD slot for the actual, oh, wow. um, oh, yeah. the program. I'll give you a close up guys, don't so, worry. So you can actually, when you turn off the car, you can take it out and you'll see it's actually from Suzuki and it's got all the information for how this is supposed to run. So you could just get a new SD card if I'm you wanted to. I'm guessing so, yeah. That's cool. Or may, I don't know what that means. Maybe you could put in, you could program more information into it. Yeah, possibly. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want more from like this, then subscribe, like. What does, oh, Sam, Sam puts it better than me. Is it share, like, subscribe? Do you want to give them some Swedish, guys? Should I give them some Swedish? Yeah, go on, give them some Swedish. Gilla den här videon. Jag vill att ni ska gå ner och kommentera lite. Du vet ni ska kommentera. Jag vill att ni skriver er favoritbil. Och att ni ska subscriba till, eller prenumerera till The Miles Driven. Tack så mycket. Can't say better than that, can you? <sighs> what are you going to ask me? Come on, Duchess. And she, I've never seen her do it. She just slid off the bed and looked at you.
This is a chance to be an internet star, tell her that. Yeah. Hold the meatball up. Oh, jeez. Who's a good girl? Who wants a meatball, eh? Who wants a meatball? Yeah, you want a meatball, don't you, eh? Yeah, good girl. Sit. 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 What, you got stinky breath, Duchess? Yeah, you do all this car testing and then you remember that you've left a microphone on your cousin and you're on the wrong side of the road and you're hoping your very best that you've actually managed to park something correctly for the first time. I had to reverse a trailer into a driveway yesterday, that was fun. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, consider subscribing and we shall uh, catch you in the next episode.